We need more accurate tutorials of actual sounds. You are under arrest. Go on, do it. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Ash, and, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm being forced against my will. Um, excuse me? I mean, today I'm gonna show you how to make drums like this. Last time I showed you how to make a drollo drop synth, and today we're gonna move on to the drums. Just don't, don't worry about him. Let's get into it. Step one is sample selection. So if we open up our drum rack here, I've got a few main sounds. I've got a thumpy kick, metallic snare, and another snare used as an accent. So let's start off with that kick there. So for this kick, you just pick any kind of super thumpy kick and it's all the same settings. I didn't change any of the settings here. The only thing I did change was the EQ. So to make it thumpier, I put on the EQ and I took off the highs. Around there. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna seem a little crazy, but I'm gonna take out all the lows. Like legit to around there. And now you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, the thumpiness is all gone. Where'd the thumpiness go? Woo woo! No, listen. Because I know I'm putting a big sub underneath it, so I'm taking out all the lows to give it room already. And trust me, your mix down will thank you. So that's the kick. Next, let's move on to the snare. Same with before, I just dragged the sample in and the only change I made was it came in a little loud. So I just turned the volume down from the default 12 down to 17 and I wanted to make it sound a little more metallic so I transposed it up one semitone and that's it now this is the cool one here so for the accent snare here's what it originally sounded like so it's a plonky type of snare but Ableton's got a really cool warp feature called texture so if you turn that on here warped it as two beats make sure that's selected and then you click the double time button and you can get some really cool stuff. And you can keep messing around with the grain size. To get some really cool textures. And I also transpose it up three to give it more metallic sound. Cool! Next, I wanna go over the arrangement. So this is what the pattern ended up looking like. Do you remember why I arrested you? Uh, it's because I didn't copy anything, right? Let me show you. Let me show you how to copy something exactly, okay? So, if you're ever having trouble figuring out a kick and snare arrangement, let me show you this little trick. I call it the drum map. What I will do sometimes is I'll take a song and I'll just paste it in. I'm gonna pitch this up so I don't get copyright. But we're not listening for the song, we're just listening for the drum beat. So, as I listen to the song, I'm gonna put a kick wherever I hear a kick and a snare wherever I hear a snare. So for this one, there's a kick there. Dun, dun, dun. There's no kick there. And so let's listen back to that. And I've matched it up. That way, if you're stuck making a drum pattern, you can see what your favorite producers do. And you can see if you notice any patterns that may pop up and then use that in your own music. Is that good enough for you? I guess. Next thing we need are some hats and the percussion. Drollo, Bitbird, Sonholo, they're all very inspired by hip hop and trap music. So obviously we gotta put in the sprinkler hats. And I like to put these at the beginning and end of every bar, just as an accent. Then I fill in the gaps. I grab some Foley sounds and I try to put them in between the gaps here of the kick and the snare. So all together, that'll sound like this. Now, if you listen back, it does sound a little wacky. <clears throat> this is too wacky. Nobody can listen to it. Okay. Okay. But I have a solution. Trust me. If you have a beat that's kind of sounding a little too crazy, a little bit hard to listen to, the number one solution is a constant rhythm behind it. For this one, I just use constant hats like this. 
and you play that along with everything else, and all of a sudden, Remember, putting a constant rhythm alongside a wackier one helps bring it together. See, you hear that? Are you bopping? See, he's bobbing along. Next, we wanna move the drum beat into different sections. When the beat ends, you wanna bring it into a different section. The best way to do that is with fills. For this one, I just used a real drum beat. I'm gonna call up my drummer friend. You don't have any drummer friends. I don't. I don't have any drummer friends. So I'm just gonna use a sample. Then just add a little bit of automated auto filter. Boom, boom, boom. For this fill, I'll stretch out the sample. So you hit warp, hold shift, and you can stretch out the first hit of a sample. Now that's cool and all, but I wanna use that grain effect again. So we're gonna go down here to texture. Stretch it out even more, I think play around with the until <gasps> cool and you know what that's that's basically it oh wait it still needs bass so I put a sub bass on each one of the kicks with each note following the root of these chords in this case E a and D. And as you can see, the sub follows along. The E, this is the A. I place these on each one of the kicks every time a kick hits. Now to make it, it's really, really simple. It's got our good old sine wave, a noise oscillator, and a bit of distortion. This preset is available on Patreon this month, so go grab it. Next, a bit of OTT. Then I EQ and boost around where I cut out the kick. And as you can hear, everything kind of fills itself out without any muddy bass, and it comes through nice and clean and thick and punchy, just the way we like it. Last really important little bit is I put an automated utility here, which just automates the gain for this specific note because it tends to be a little bit louder than all the other ones. So I've automated it so it goes down a few dB when that note hits. Just so that way it helps with the mix and it doesn't overwhelm everything. And all together, this is what we got. I'll be honest. Yep, this is this is a bop. So I can go? Yeah. Just like that? Oh, okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing, or if you learned something today, please consider joining my Patreon so I can keep doing this and keep making videos for you. Or if you'd rather support for free, you can always hit like and subscribe for the channel. It really, really helps me out. Follow me on all my socials, but that is it. Peace out. Thank you so much. See ya.